What's up YouTube? Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Now, you might be asking yourself, where's his afro? Well, don't worry, it's still there. Thing is, I just had to rush home, I ran in here to set up my set, and I didn't really have time to do my hair in between. Now, why am I in such a hurry, you may ask? Well, it's because, for the first time in quite a while, I'm bringing you guys an unboxing video. And this one is a bit of a doozy. As you may or may not have been able to deduce by the variety of insects, invertebrates, and arthropods on the table, the thing we are unboxing today is a little bit creepy and a little bit crawly. But it is very, very exciting, and I am more than ready to rip into this thing. So without any further ado, let's get started. My life is a bit of a mess, but I like it that way. Between juggling school, work, dozens of animals, and a constant drive to explore, things can get pretty hectic. But one thing always stays the same. A burning passion for wildlife and a desire to preserve the biodiversity of our world through public education, conservation, and animal care. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. Now before we actually get this box open, I gotta say a few things first. This behemoth of a package just arrived in Texas all the way from San Diego, California, and it was shipped to me by an invertebrate breeder named Sean Kramer. Remember that name, because it's very important. Full disclosure, Sean shipped me this box and all of the contents inside absolutely free of charge. His end of the bargain is a bit of publicity and exposure on my YouTube channel. So Sean himself, whose Facebook I'll put a link to in the video description, breeds a wide variety of invertebrates. We are talking just thousands and thousands of invertebrates at this guy's house, which honestly sounds pretty great to me. But the thing Sean wants publicity for most is not his personal Facebook page. It's actually a Facebook group called US Invertebrate Auctions. Now this is a service that I've shown interest in and used before, and that's how I know Sean. Now, I'm sorry to my international viewers, but the whole concept of the group is to provide a place where people can bid on auctions of invertebrates or supplies, anything in between, from reputable breeders and dealers in the United States. Anybody with a Facebook account can join the group, and I'll put a link to it in the description, but if you're looking for cockroaches, tarantulas, centipedes, praying mantises, really almost any invertebrate or invertebrate related supply you could think of, this is definitely your place to go. Not only do you know you are getting the healthiest animals possible, you're directly benefiting these breeders and allowing them to continue their production. So, now that that's out of the way, we have a massive box to unpack. I'm really hopeful that everything made it here okay. Uh, this box, unfortunately, could not be shipped overnight, so we did the next best thing and it got here in two days. Thankfully, since these are invertebrates, they should be pretty hardy, and uh, most, if not all of them, will have survived the trip unscathed. Let's uh, get the first cut in here. Yes. And I'm sure that Sean packaged these really well. I'll be sure to show you guys everything that I find in here. So, as is standard practice, we have a bunch of styrofoam insulation on all sides of the box. This is the first thing we have to take out. And inside here, we have newspaper, we have these little airbag thingies. And under all of this stuff, which I will gently toss onto the surface of the table. We've got even more material, and, ooh boy, we have a ton of deli cups in here. Are you guys ready? Look at this, all right. So we're gonna go through these one by one and make sure everybody's okay. I'm gonna set the box on the floor and start taking cups out. It looks like on top of here we have a little extra goodie. Uh, this is, this is not a live animal, but what this is, is some uh, raw bee pollen. And this is used as a food supplement for many species of animals. I know people use it for their geckos, and I imagine many of the invertebrates in this box will be able to eat this as well. So we got our pollen. Very exciting. Right here, 
Ooh, my goodness. So the first thing we're unboxing is a species of cockroach. Now, if you're squeamish about roaches at all, I hope to change that. And I'm very sorry because most of the contents in this box are going to be cockroaches. However, these are not your standard kitchen variety cockroaches. This is a species, I'm looking off the side of the screen because I wrote it down. This is a species called uh, Eubloberis species ivory. These are ivory head cockroaches. And there should be about 10 of them in here. Oh, beautiful. Now you look at this cockroach and you tell me that looks like a standard kitchen roach to you. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna have to get so many close-up shots of these things in post. Fantastic. So there are supposed to be 10 of these in here and all of the cockroaches in these boxes uh, will be put into breeding colonies. I will be trying to produce as many of them as I can. Their primary purpose will be as feeders for my other animals, but what I'll also be doing with them is breeding them and selling groups of them either at expos or online. These are just the prettiest cockroaches. Um, you can see where they get their ivory namesake, and on their carapaces above their wings, they've got this almost butterfly-like pattern. Nice jump, buddy. So these guys are gonna go back into their cup. We are gonna seal that up until we get their colony ready. And there are lots of babies in here too, it looks like. So we have our ivory roaches and we have our bee pollen. Next. Ooh, lovely. We have a 10 count uh, Eurycotus decipiens. These, these are also cockroaches. And these are most commonly referred to as zebra roaches. These ones are significantly smaller than our ivory head roaches. Whew, very nice. These are all nymphs, I believe. They're pretty small. This is a small Costa Rican species of cockroach. They're good at climbing, and they're very colorful, which makes them great feeders for geckos, for chameleons, uh, for any arboreal animal that's going to like a very visible food item. So these guys going to go back in here and so far everything looks to be in perfect health. Now seeing as these are cockroaches I'm not terribly worried that they would uh, pass away in transit but you never know it's better safe than sorry. Okay so I just pulled this one out of the box and I'm not really a cockroach expert but the label doesn't really have this species full name on it. But Look how big this cockroach nymph is. That's crazy. Um, the label on this says uh, 10 count cave mix. And on the list of insects that I said I was interested in, I included both death's head cockroaches and giant cave roaches. So based on this label, uh, cave mix, I am not entirely certain what species of cockroach this is. I'm sure Sean will clear it up in post, but uh, for you guys, this is going to be a bit of a mystery. There are no adults in this box, so we'll have to wait and see whether or not this is a death's head cockroach or a giant cave cockroach, both of which are equally amazing. Um, the death's head cockroach is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's got a bit of a, a jack-o'-lantern face on its head, and the giant cave roaches really just, they live up to their name. They are absolutely massive. And this is a massive nymph. This isn't an adult. So we're going to put him back in here. There are uh, about nine more in here. So we're just going to wait and see what these are. That's three cockroach species. Even though I'm not certain what the third one is, they're all in great health. Sweet. Okay, so I had to dig to the bottom of the box before we get to our other variety of invertebrate. Uh, but I found, the last, I found the last container of cockroaches. These... Let's see, it says uh, 10 count mix slash egg nevea. Now this is a species called Panclora nevea. The common name is banana cockroach or green Cuban roach. Here we go. Okay, here's just one of the uh, many that are in this cup. So this is called a banana cockroach and they are called that, I believe, due to their preferred choice of habitat. As you can see, this kind can fly. So we are going to very gently return him to his cup and I'm gonna let you see these guys in post. I'm gonna take a bunch of shots of them because it seems that they want nothing to do with me right now and I don't want them all over my room. I've actually had this species before and if you follow me on my Instagram, which can be found in the description, uh, you will have seen photos of them. I do still have a couple of those but I, I wanted some more to bolster my colony. And so, as you can see, we have 
four, count them, one, two, three, four, lovely species of cockroaches in here. This brings my total count of cockroach species to eight, which means that I now have breeding colonies of eight different species of cockroach. To some, I'm sure that sounds like something out of a horror movie, but I really love cockroaches because just like so many of the other animals I keep, they're just another misunderstood kind of animal that doesn't get enough love. So we have our cockroaches, we have our bee pollen. Next up, we have our isopods. I'm getting into the isopod business, and it appears that Sean wants to help me in doing that because he sent way more than I thought I was getting. Um, I might have to go out and buy some more enclosures to house all of these, but let me get them all out on the table. So this is Armadillium maculatum. This is Armadillium montenegro. I wasn't actually expecting four of these containers, so I had to get up and uh, do some researching on scientific names. But uh, in here we have Porcelio capensis, and it's a variety called party mix, which just means that it's a mixture of uh, morphs and different genotypes. In here we have 12 uh, Porcelio sevilla, uh, Seville isopods. He says this one's a bonus, I wasn't expecting three of the others. Um, these are Porcelio labus, or giant orange isopods. Very cool. So the deal with isopods is, I mean, obviously every kid loves a roly-poly, but they also make for excellent cleanup crew in bioactive enclosures. If you throw the right species of isopod in with your reptiles or amphibians, they will go in and eat the waste, dead plant material. They'll basically, true to their nickname, keep the enclosure clean. And so now I have five species of isopod. In addition to the native species, Armadillium vulgare, which I already have plenty of. So uh, let's start with our little isopods and move our way up to the Armadillium species. These are the Porcelio lavis, giant orange isopods. It took me a second to actually get this container open. Let me make sure these guys survive the transit. Isopods are much uh, more fragile than cockroaches. I do see some springtails in here, which are another uh, very important part of a cleanup crew. There's one. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're all showing up. These are huge. These are way larger than I expected. Oh, man. I've never seen this species in person. It is much larger than I thought it would be. That is such a cool animal. Now, um, isopods and roly-polies and wood lice, all those animals, they're actually not insects. They are all crustaceans, which even though they live on land, it means that they are more closely related to uh, lobsters and crabs than they are to insects. So we're gonna put the cap on these giant orange isopods. Really lovely little species. I'm certainly not complaining that Sean sent me extras. I just wasn't expecting some of these. So Porcelio sevilla, these ones are all out on top. So if we get this one open, Lovely. Okay, these look like um, the wood lice native to where I live, but they are much larger and they have a beautiful white fringe around the side. Shortly I will have all these guys set up in proper enclosures. I'm sure when it gets to that I will be uh, filming a setup guide as I go along. So we have our uh, Porcelio sevilla and our Porcelia lavis, giant orange. Um, here are our Porcelio capensis, or our party mix isopods. I did see one of these in here earlier, but I might have to dig for them. Oh, they're all in here. Oh my goodness. Quite a few. So in here, looks like we've got some orange ones, some white ones, uh, some with a couple polka dots on them. It looks like they're doing well on their little paper towel. These are just tiny. These are certainly small enough to go unnoticed by most uh, animals that you would need a cleanup crew for. Now, the last two here are our armadillium species. We have armadillium montenegro and armadillium maculatum. These are montenegro isopods and these are uh, zebra isopods. And uh, they look pretty similar to how they sound. So I think we're gonna open the zebra isopods first, make sure they're doing all right. I didn't see any of them on the surface, but I imagine they're just fine in here. Everybody else has been so far. Here's one. That is just the coolest thing. Um, hey, I should stress, isopods are really hard to package and ship. Um, lots of people have horror stories about them not arriving alive, 
and I think that's really a testament to Sean's packaging skills. Another reason to go look him and the U.S. invertebrate auction up if you're in the market for some new invertebrates or isopods. Ah, oh, yeah, here they are. Check those out. Fantastic. They look just like the ones I have outside on the sidewalk, but they are, uh, they're zebras. So that's pretty cool. Um, our last species here, Armadillium Montenegro. Now, I should make the distinction. All of these containers actually say 10 plus 2 as opposed to 10 count, like I thought. So that means that he sent me uh, approximately 12 of every species, and then a few of them had eggs in here as well. So, Armadillium Montenegro. These are commonly called clown isopods. Ooh. Oh, that one's lovely. So these guys are covered in three little rows of spots. They have some yellow spots up front, and then the rest are uh, white or a much lighter color. I understand that these are obviously much smaller, maybe much less exciting to some than reptiles and amphibians, but they are just the coolest little critters. Isopods, obviously, get their common name of uh, roly-poly by rolling up into a ball to uh, deter and defend themselves from predators. Now these ones, I assume because they're captive bred, are pretty hesitant to do that. But I have no problem with that. Just makes them even cooler. So, we're putting the cap back on our clown isopods. And one last time, let's go over everything that was in this box. We have our clown isopods. We have our zebra isopods. We have our party mix isopods. We have our Sevilla isopods. And we have our giant orange isopods. We have five species of isopods. Um, we also have some bee pollen, not to be forgotten, and we have our banana cockroaches, our mystery cave mix cockroaches, our ivory head cockroaches, and our zebra cockroaches. We have a lot of bugs on the table, folks. I'm going to be spending the rest of this evening setting up their enclosures. I really should have done that beforehand, but I wanted to film it for you guys just to provide some extra content about these fellas. So, we have nine species of cockroaches and isopods on the table here. I didn't find a single one that passed away during shipping. So, to circle this episode back around and uh, help us draw to a close here, I highly recommend Sean Kramer, who you can find in the description, and U.S. Invertebrate Auctions for all of your cockroach, isopod, or other invertebrate needs. He sent me free bugs. You can't tell me not to shout this guy out. So, with all that said and done, I am very excited to be working with this plethora of species. I'm going to set up breeding colonies for all of these, and we're going to be hoping for the best, but I'll be filming quick little setup and care guides for most, if not all, of them. You have that to look forward to, as well as all my other content and a second sponsorship I have going in the works. So, again, now that we've reached the end of the video, my name is Daniel Carter, at Afro Herp Keeper. If you're interested in more reptile and amphibian related content in the future, and you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video and you want to let me know, be sure to leave a like. If you have any questions about the bugs we received today, about any of my other animals, or just want to talk, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you're already subscribed and want to get notified when I upload a new video, be sure to hit the little bell icon. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.